Okay, so let's get started because I think there's a lot of things to talk about here. So let's dive into it. So this will be the overview of what we're going to cover today. Uh, so the first thing is, is like five keys to finding a winning product, which is really important. And then we're going to dive into three methods, three free methods, keep in mind, to finding the, the winning products itself. And then we're going to cover afterwards three paid methods. Uh, and actually, these are paid methods that I use as well uh, to finding winning products. And when we get to the very end, we'll talk about the Chinese New Year that we're in the middle of and the coronavirus that's in the middle of and the U.S. Uh, shipping options that we should be thinking about. So like I said, the first thing, let's talk about the five keys to finding a winning product. The very first thing is that it should be a product that solves a problem. And you want to think about that. So you want to make sure that the, that the product that you're choosing, is it something that actually has an impact? Is it solving a pain point that, that your customer might have? Uh, one example was, um, I remember uh, finding one where, um, and it actually had a good tagline too, because it said, it was like, did you know? Did you know that dryer sheets have like over 500 and something chemicals in your dryer sheets? And, and it's just like, they use that little fear tactic. And it's like, okay, well, here's this alternative, which is this natural ball of wool that you can use. And you can put that in your, in your dryer to dry your clothes and it, it takes away the static and all this kind of stuff. And um, it was just like, okay, that's something where, you know, people that, you know, are fearful of, you know, something like, uh, oh no, there's chemicals. I want, I want to have something that's organic and less chemicals in my, in my clothes. And that, that kind of solves a problem. Now, the other thing is like having a wow factor. So something that really stands out. And when we go through some of them, you'll see, but, the thing is, um, you want something that's going to be eye catchy and, and immediately is like attention grabbing. So um, Facebook, you know, will rate engagement um, as, as something that happens within the first three seconds of the ad. So uh, within the first three seconds, if it doesn't capture the person's attention, then you're going to end up losing them. So it's, it's the product and then even how the product is displayed. Does it have anything that has that, that wow factor? Uh, to that product, which is important. Um, the next thing is, you know, something that's typically not found in stores, or at least not easy to find. So um, if you're trying to sell a product, you know, if it's just a phone case, right? If it's just a phone case that uh, you're trying to sell, well, you can just go to any store or the shopping mall and buy uh, any old phone case. But, you know, like if you take, you know, Scott Hilsey's example, right? His, one of his first products was that sticky phone case and he stuck it, you know, it, it would stick on the wall, stick on the mirror. And all of a sudden there's all these different use cases. And when that video shows that, that's what gives that viral aspect of it. So it was really, really cool and catchy. And you don't find that in stores. The next thing is, you know, some type of product that gives more confidence to the customer, right? So, um, uh, something that will you know make them feel better about themselves because people buy based on emotion and that's that's the number one factor and I think we talked about that at that funnel hacking live event man uh, Russell broke it down and I thought this was key I'll share it it's actually uh, uh, but it's somewhat related to this is that uh, buying behaviors 50% of your uh, of your prospects they're gonna buy based on emotion so they make that emotional buy. So 50% is buying based on emotion. Then you're going to have about 30% that's going to buy based on logic. So you want to make sure you're hitting these touch points. So the first 50% uh, buying based on emotion, they're going to buy. And if it's something that gives them more confidence, you know, they feel better about themselves or whatever, um, they're going to buy because of the emotion. Then they'll logically, you know, try to make sense and think about it. So that 30% you're capturing based on logic. And then for the final 20%, this is where you where uh, customers will buy based on fear, uh, FOMO they call it, right? Fear of missing out. And uh, the last 20% will buy on fear. So when you throw something into your tagline like, um, you know, hey, you know, this is available. You know, the product is attractive as a wow factor. It's solving a thing. It's giving them more confidence. You show that it's a great deal. 
hey, you're going to get a 50% off. Yeah, that sounds great. It logically makes sense. And then it's today only. Well, ooh, now it's a fear of missing out. So you're like touching and all of these factors within one like ad, ad copy. And it's, it's a really cool thing. So you can see how it comes together where you're touching the emotion, the logic, the fear of missing out. And it really hits on there, uh, which is cool. Yeah. Quick question on that, Brian. Uh, the, what are some of the other emotions besides fear of missing out that were mentioned that you can recall? Uh, so, so the fear of missing out would be like the scarcity play. Um, and that you would just kind of touch on um, where, you know, you're given that deadline where it's not available anymore. Yeah, the timer, that, that countdown. Um, but when it comes to the emotional play, you know, that's that first 50%. And like I talked about in that in that question, it's like, you know, did you know, did you know the regular dryer sheets, the average dryer sheets has over 550 chemicals in there? Did you know that? Did you know you're putting that with every load of laundry as you're drying your clothes? And it's like um, also it's just like, whoa, you know, I'm just all getting on my clothes and then my you know, my kids are wearing it, whatever, and all of a sudden that's an emotional play. And you just introduced a problem or a pain point that they did not really think about before. Um, so that's also like the psychology of what you're building in, in your ad set, right? And that's another thing what, you know, from that funnel hacking live, which was like, you know, everything really breaks down into the hook, the story and the offer. And that's how you market things. So when you tell that story um, and here you're building it up was like, okay, well, yeah, did you know that uh, the average dryer sheet has over 550 chemicals in it. And some of these chemicals are actually really bad for you. And then if you share the story, like how bad it is, now all of a sudden that, that pain, that problem, that level of importance is like, oh man, I don't want to have my family using these dryer sheets. And now you gave them an alternative. Did you know that you could buy these uh, balls that are made out of wood? They're, they're, they're made in New Zealand and they're shaped from like, you know, sheep is a hundred percent organic. There's no chemicals in there and it works actually better than the dryer sheets that you're putting in, putting on your family. Then all of a sudden they're just like, wow. And you can get a pack of three uh, and get the second three free. And you know, you start putting, putting an offer together and it comes together. That's really good. But you can see like, you know, when you start building up that story, all of a sudden the importance rises up, the value, and you know, they're gonna begin to think through, you know, you're touching the emotion, and now they're thinking through logically where you show them that, okay, you know, we got a special offer, and it's, it's only while supplies last, that's that scarcity play, right? Only while supplies last, and it's only available for the next 24 hours. Boom. They're gonna <laughs> Yeah, I'm true. reminded of the uh, commercials that came on late at night with the, where it shows a bunch of people like dropping stuff, and then it tells you, hey, but you know, we'll not only send you one, but we'll send you two. Right. So I'm, my my brain is connecting the click funnels to that those infomercials. Oh yeah, infomercials. So uh, they they brought up about infomercials, and yeah, I mean they're they're the the kings or queens of like you know just really funnels. reaching people at a distance, right? I say, you know, take time just to watch those things and you'll get ideas. You'll get, yeah, you'll get selling points from them. Pitchmen, right? They're like Pitchmen and QVC. Um, they know how to make, you know, take an average product. They'll take this pen and they'll make it sound like it's the best thing you need to buy <laughs> because they really made an excellent offer, which is cool. So but, but before we get off track here, so we'll get into finding these products which is the key thing here. And then we make the offer after we find these things. So the last point is about uh, finding products that like either save them time or money, right? So, I mean, you know, they're solving, it's solving a problem. It's giving them more confidence. They feel better about the product and even something that even saves them time, saves them money. So on, you know, things like that. So these are all like different factors. You want to find, you know, some products, you know, meet all of the bullet points, maybe some meet three of them, but these are just criteria that, that you want to, that you want to look for as you're doing your own research, because the name of the game here in, in dropshipping is all about uh, testing and 
finding winning products. You know, your product has testing. So just like a stock trader in the stock market, they have their own ways of finding stocks that they think are gonna go up, right? If they're buying low, selling high kind of thing. The same thing here. We want to find products that are on the upward trend. You know, what what has that potential? Um, that's the key thing here. So the next we're going to talk about is the three methods of finding winning products. Wasn't that amazing? I'm telling you, man, I hope that was helpful for you. My goal is to help you get more sales and drop shipping. And check this out. I put something even more special for you. I put together this amazing guide. I call it the three keys on how to take the guesswork out of finding winning products. It's the ultimate resource guide to finding winning products for drop shippers just like you. And I put this together, it's free. It came from a recent event that I did teaching people in Chicago. There's over 250 members here in our Chicago group. And I put this together and I saved it to give it away to you for free. It contains the full video and an ultimate resource guide that you can download. So this is really amazing, I'm excited about it. Now, why am I doing this? Because I believe this information should be for free and I'm helping people get started in drop shipping. I wanna help you avoid the fakes out there and keep it real. And I want you to follow real tactics from professional drop shippers. So this is what I put together, it's a collection. I call it the ultimate guide and it's something that I'm gonna be giving away to you for free. All you need to do is click on the link or go to products.techmoneytalks.com Go to products.techmoneytalks.com. So I'm giving this to you for free and I'm hoping you can return the favor by maybe leaving an awesome review for the Tech Money Talks podcast or maybe doing a shout out on Instagram or maybe sharing it with somebody. Be a friend to somebody who needs it, you know? So share it with somebody who needs it. And then also, even better yet, you can give me one of these.